Hello everybody, James Halifax here. Today we have a major piece of news that I'm really excited to share with you guys and just sink my teeth into. Recently a brand new phase 2 clinical trial attempting to treat alcohol use disorder with ketamine assisted psychotherapy was released and the results were flabbergasting. They were amazing. I don't even have the words to describe how good they are. Now this is important because in order for us to validate the thesis that psychedelic medicines will disrupt the pharmaceuticals industry when it comes to treating mental health care, the most important metric that we should be looking at is how successful the clinical trials attempting to treat traditional mental health conditions such as PTSD, such as depression, such as addiction are, how effective the psychedelic trials are, and how much better they are than current treatments. Now, we've already had a couple of home run clinical trials. Of course, the number one that comes to mind is the MAPS Phase 3 clinical trial that attempted to treat severe PTSD with MDMA assisted psychotherapy. And as all of you guys already know, I'm sure, it was a smashing success. 67% of people were essentially cured, and another 21% of people saw their symptoms decrease by 50% or more, bringing the grand total of people who were effectively treated up to 88%. If we keep getting clinical trials with results like that, then we may be witnessing a paradigm shift in how mental health care is handled. And I know that the term paradigm shift is probably used a little bit too liberally and I'm definitely guilty of overusing it at times. But what we're witnessing right now with clinical trials like this, I think the word paradigm shift definitely fits the description. So like I said, this trial was attempting to treat alcohol use disorder, severe alcohol use disorder, using ketamine assisted psychotherapy. This was done in England at the University of Exeter. I literally have zero idea if I'm pronouncing that university correct or not, but the University of Exeter, and it was done in collaboration with Awaken Life Sciences. For anybody who is interested in learning more about Awaken and is perhaps an investor, their ticker symbol on the OTCQB markets is AWKNF, and in Canada on the NEO exchange, it is AWKN. This was actually the world's first ever controlled trial to test the efficacy of ketamine assisted therapy to treat severe alcohol use disorder. And that just makes it a little bit more exciting. So without further ado, let's put up the tear sheet on the screen now. So as you can see, this is coming from psychedelicspotlight.com, which by the way, you should all definitely go check out. If you wanna learn more about ketamine therapy, you can learn what a K-hole is, for example. If you wanna learn more about the science of psychedelics, there's a section for that. If you wanna learn more about the business of psychedelics, there's a section for that. If you wanna learn cultural aspects, like how the movie Dune was inspired by psychedelics, well, guess what? There's a section for that. Getting into the tear sheet at hand, we can see that this was a double-blinded, placebo-controlled phase two clinical trial with 96 patients. So that's a pretty fair-sized clinical trial, especially for phase two, 96 patients. And these 96 patients were split into four separate groups. So first, we have the group that received three ketamine infusions and care therapy. So care therapy is essentially just Awaken's version of psychotherapy. It's their regimen for psychotherapy. So this is the group that we are most interested in here, the group that actually got the ketamine psychotherapy. The second group received a placebo, in this case, three saline infusions with, again, the care therapy. The third received ketamine infusions and alcohol education, so no psychotherapy, but just education. And the fourth group got the placebo along with the alcohol education. So what the scientists were looking for in this clinical trial, what the clinicians were looking for, were twofold. Their primary outcomes were, one, the number of days abstinent in the six months following treatment. So in the 180 days after treatment finished, how many individual days did people remain abstinent? Was it five days? Was it 100 days? Was it 150 days? The second primary outcome was the relapse at a six month follow up. So it's important to note here that the definition of relapse as Awakened sees it is essentially just one bad day. One day of heavy drinking is enough to put you into that relapse category. So you can still be abstinent and have relapsed, had one bad day, and you'll end up in that relapse category. 
Alrighty guys, so I am super excited to share with you the results of this trial just because they were so absolutely great. So without further ado, let's put up our second hair sheet onto the screen now, which shows the results. So as we can see here, the findings showed that ketamine combined with care therapy resulted in a total abstinence in 162 of 180 days in the following six month period. Let's repeat that. These people who all were severely addicted to alcohol, who often could not make it a day or two days or three days without relapsing, on average, made 162 sober days out of 180 in the six months following the treatment. That is just absolutely spectacular, guys. Continuing, they also achieved an increase in abstinence from around 2% prior to the trial to 86% post-trial. So what's that? So what that is saying is, before the trial began, only 2% of the people in it said that they were currently abstinent from alcohol, and afterwards, by the time the trial ended, six months after the trial ended still, 86% of individuals said that they were abstinent from alcohol. We're gonna get to, in a moment, the current rates for treatment for alcohol use disorder, but they do not approach 86% by any stretch of the imagination. This just blows away other current treatments, and it's just amazing to see. However, I will just note that that doesn't mean that 86% of people uh, did not relapse, because remember, a relapse is defined as essentially one bad day, so a lot of these people may have broken a day or two or as we saw, the average was 162 sober days out of 180. So on average, in six months, people had 18 bad days. So they would be considered in the relapse group, but they're still abstinent. So that's just an important point to, to remember. Continuing, the results for relapse at six months showed that the ketamine plus care group's risk of relapse was 2.7 times less than the placebo group plus alcohol education group. Wow, 2.7 times less chance. That's absolutely fantastic. However, we do need to remember that a lot of people still relapse. So if we're looking at the group that took the psychotherapy and had the ketamine, there was still a 62% relapse rate, but that just means that 62% of people had at least one bad day. And remember, the majority of people, on average, 162 out of 180 days sober. So I wouldn't be too concerned at that 62% relapse rate. I think that the more important metric to look at is how frequently people can remain sober. Because fighting an addiction isn't a binary outcome. It's not either you win or you lose. You're fighting it every single day. And on the most part, people won most of the battles that they fought. So it doesn't matter to me too much that there's this 62% this relapse because in general, people are doing what they need to do the vast majority of the days. Continuing, both groups receiving care therapy experienced significant decreases in the risk of mortality. According to the findings, one in eight patients would have died within 12 months without the psychedelic treatment, while the number decreased to one in 80 for those receiving it. So I'm actually not 100% sure how they came up with these stats. I guess the one in eight patients dying per year is probably the mortality rate for individuals that do have severe alcohol use disorder. I'm even less clear how they came up to this number decreasing to 1 in 80 for those receiving it as nobody died in the trial and in fact there were no serious adverse events in the trial, that's important to note also. But I don't really know how they came up with the 1 in 80 would die after receiving the trial if nobody died. Why isn't it 1 in 100, 1 in 1000? I'm sure some statistician can point it out down in the comments down below. But important to note, very impressive even if I don't exactly understand how they came to those numbers. Finishing off with the results here, it says that the study also produced multiple encouraging secondary outcomes, ranging from improved liver function in patients and a statistically significant decrease in depression to an increase in the ability to experience pleasure. So just breaking down some of these secondary outcomes a little bit, I would say that the first one, the improved liver function, is probably not a direct effect of the ketamine therapy. It's probably a secondary effect and a primary effect of the reduction in alcohol intake. So when you go from drinking essentially every day to excess to 
only drinking 18 days in six months, obviously your liver is probably going to operate a little bit better. When we look at the decrease in depression, it's probably a mix because we have seen studies that show that ketamine therapy is great for treating depression. We'll actually talk about that in a minute. But then also people who are drinking every day are tend to be more depressed. So it's probably a outcome of the two. The fact that they're drinking less daily and then also that the, the ketamine may have actually helped with their depression. The last point here though is the one I find actually the most interesting. The increase in the ability to experience pleasure. I don't know whether that would have came from the reduction in alcohol or the ketamine therapy. I would guess the ketamine therapy, but that is just that, a guess, a speculation. But it's just a very interesting point because Oftentimes people who are in severe mental states, one of the issues that they have isn't necessarily the fact that they feel terrible all the time, but it's the inability to experience different emotions, including pleasure. So the fact that we saw an increase in the ability to experience pleasure, is just a nice little cherry on the top for me when it comes to this study. All right, let's take a little bit of a step back for a moment and just talk about addiction because we saw these absolutely fantastic results. And again, 162 days out of 180 days, people remained abstinent when they were on ketamine therapy with, psycho, uh, with psychotherapy, excuse me. And then we saw a 2.7 times less likely, fuck, and then we, and then we saw people that took the ketamine therapy were 2.7 times less likely to uh, relapse than the other group. And we had an 86 percent, uh, an 86 percent abstinence rate at the end of the trial. And it's important to remember that there are other addictions than just alcohol addiction, obviously. There are other substance addictions like opioid use disorder. There are behavioral addictions like gambling addiction. And in fact, according to Awaken, addiction affects 20% of the American population. 20%, that's one in five people that you know are suffering from an addiction. And it's important to note that the results of this one trial may be able to be extrapolated to other types of addictions. So probably other types of substance addictions, but also behavioral addictions. And in fact, what's really interesting is Awaken currently has a clinical trial using ketamine assisted psychotherapy to try to treat gambling addiction. So if when we get the results of that, if they are as equally amazing as this, then we might be able to start saying that maybe ketamine assisted psychotherapy is an effective addiction treatment, still too early, but very exciting. Moving back in specifically to alcohol addiction, Awaken says that 5% of the American population suffer from alcohol addiction. That's one in 20 people you know, probably somebody that you're close with suffers from an alcohol problem. And unfortunately, only 16% of those individuals are treated. And of that 16% of people who are treated, 75% relapse within 12 months. Three out of four people who attempt to get their alcohol addiction treated will relapse. That is a horrifying number and it is what makes studies like this so exciting because at the end of the day, we have to remember that this isn't just about business. This isn't just about new pharmaceutical companies disrupting old pharmaceutical companies. This is about helping the tens of millions of people that have a substance use disorder and cannot get treated. Recently, I was talking to a doctor in a ketamine clinic and they were saying that people with these addictions they want to be treated. They, it's not like they're like, oh, I'm happy. I'm drinking myself to oblivion every day. They want to be treated. They just don't feel like they can. So if we can get a new effective treatment, this will help millions of people's lives. And that's essentially what it is all about at the end of the day. Taking a look at a quote from the lead author of this study, a lady named Professor Celia Morgan, who is professor of psychopharmacology at Exeter and also Awaken's head of ketamine assisted therapy for addiction. She had this to say on the clinical trial results. Alcohol use disorder is a pervasive and persistent public health issue affecting at least 390 million people globally. Treatment rates are low and relapse rates post-treatment tend to be high. We urgently need new and more effective treatments. 
We found that controlled low doses of ketamine combined with manualized psychological therapy can significantly increase post-treatment abstinence rates. This is extremely encouraging as we normally see three out of four people returning to heavy drinking within 12 months of treatment. Three out of four people fail and return to heavy drinking within 12 months of treatment. What was that stat we talked about for this trial? 86% of people were abstinent six months after the trial. So yes, this is only six months, not a full year after, but 86% compared to 25%. Guys, this is game changing. This is, dare I say it, paradigm shifting. And it's not just me that says that. Let's finish the quote here. The data we've collected from this study paves the way for a paradigm shift in how alcohol use disorder is treated. We are on the cusp of being able to heal millions, tens of millions, potentially hundreds of millions of people. This will make the world a much, much better place. Last couple things I want to talk about before ending this video is, of course, this extremely successful phase two clinical trial is going to open the door open the doors towards future phase three clinical trials. Of course, we're gonna have the AWAKENS phase three clinical trial, which will probably start relatively soon. And then hopefully we can get data by the end of the year on that. Maybe not, maybe it's early 2023. We'll just have to wait and see. But we'll also see many of the dozens of other companies working with ketamine, such as Numinous, such as uh, such as Delic, operate further clinical trials. And I'm not saying that they necessarily will. Those are just two examples. But we have so many companies working with ketamine. And now that we have this amazing addiction uh, study coming out, we will definitely see further larger clinical studies on whether ketamine can treat addiction, which is what we need at the end of the day. It's also important to note that ketamine has been shown in other clinical trials to be very effective in treating depression. So the the end game isn't necessarily just specifically addiction. Perhaps ketamine can be effective in treating other things. And also in North America, I don't know about in Europe, but in North America, we currently are able to use ketamine quote unquote off label. That essentially means that since it's already a legal substance, it's an anesthetic, doctors can prescribe it for other uh, indications. So we have so many different uh, ketamine clinic labs right now across North America treating depression. I'm sure with this fantastic clinical trial, more and more of them will start treating addiction with it as well. Just on one final note, guys, we still do have to be conservative with our language. I know that perhaps at times in this video, I wasn't conservative with my language. This is only, however, a smallish clinical trial, only 96 participants, only a quarter of that were people that were in the group we were interested in. So we definitely need to see this trial replicated multiple times with larger populations, uh, perhaps more diverse populations. I don't know off the top of my head how diverse this population was, but you get the point. We just need ever more data. We can't make any bold, expansive claims based on this one clinical trial, as exciting, as groundbreaking, as paradigm shifting as it may be. We just need to wait until we get more data to confirm this. And with that note, if you enjoyed the episode, pump up that algorithm. Give me a like, comment down below whether you are excited by this late Christmas present that we all got in the psychedelics industry. I am absolutely ecstatic about it. And I wanna know if you guys are as well. Share it, check out psychedelicspotlight.com, sign up for the newsletter, do all that great stuff. I love you guys all so much and I will see you next time.